The car culture is a very diverse society. There's the fast culture, the clean culture, and the off-roading culture. Which one do you fit into? Today I want to talk about the pros and cons of each car culture. Let's jump into today's video. way we're going to talk about these different cultures, I'm going to set them up into three different groups. The fast, the clean, the off-road. And we're going to have three pros and three cons. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly about these three car cultures. Let's go ahead and talk about the most famous of them all, the fast culture. Now there's nothing like going to the racetrack on a Saturday evening with your best friends, your buddies, watching fast cars. Gives you something to talk about. Hey, maybe even have a little betting competition of which car is gonna win. Not only that, but a lot of places will actually let you get out and test out your cars on the track. Test and tune night. I myself actually performed in the test and tune night in my 1998 Mach 1 when it was a V6 and also when it was a V8. They also host great events there. So whenever it's a big time racer like Street Outlaws or Demonology and Dunk Master, they usually host it at the racetrack. The second thing is, it is a very diverse community. We have American muscle, imports, bikes, trucks, anything that has an engine on it and you can make it fast, that's the fast culture. And not even just drag racing, there's drifting, there's autocrossing. There's a lot to do whenever it comes to just being fast in the fast culture, which lead me to never boring. It's a never ending cycle of excitement. Put it to you this way. If you start off at drag racing with a Mustang, you race your Mustang, you just so happen to just be tired of the Mustang. Guess what? You can start with a new platform. You can go Camaro or you can go Supra and restart the process all over. Let's say you're getting tired of just drag racing, going in a straight line. Well, you could take that well, it's a Mach 1 now, but you could take that same car and autocross it. And autocrossing, all it is, is just driving it around cones, driving it on a track, like this, what this Mach 1's doing. And if you decide that you still want to do something else, there's also drifting, which is what I'm trying to get into. Now that we got the three pros out the way, let's go ahead and get into the cons. The fast culture is probably the most dangerous thing that you can do out of this whole entire list. You can easily wreck. Like many cases, we have actually lost a, a few great people while they was racing. You don't even have to be in the car for it to be dangerous. And that's what leads me to my next point. the idiots. I feel like this is the reason why we do not have many car events anymore is because people are doing stupid stuff. People would literally go out in the middle of the road and start doing donuts in their intersection in broad daylight. Honestly, I feel like that is just very stupid. I don't even know why would you do that. Some people nowadays feel like they're invincible. Another bad thing is those same people are very competitive. They will tell you up and down that car is faster than anything else on the road. They would try and get you to race and then when they don't win, they will be a sore loser. Of course, I'm not talking about mainly at the track. I'm also talking about illegal street racing. So there's that too. It is very costly. Right off the bat, this car right here is probably like $70,000. There's a 2020 GT500, 760 horses. It's all great and all, but it costs so much to own. And on top of that, think about how much the tires are. Think about the carbon fiber wheels. The carbon fiber wheels alone, I think are $1,500 a wheel. Oh, and if you break anything on there, let's say you build a complete drag racing car and you just break an engine. That's a $15,000 engine that is now just pieces. 
I'm not saying that you have to stay away from the fast culture. Just be careful, watch for idiots, and make sure you have the money to do this sport. Let's go ahead and go to the clean culture. clean culture I'm talking about car shows I'm talking about show cars I'm talking about the cleanest rides you will ever see what's good about the clean culture is it's a very chill environment people will usually wake up for cars and coffee caffeine and octane you know something that happens in the morning time where you just meet up at a place get some coffee and just hang out with your friends. Walk around in the parking lot looking at people's cars. I know it sounds pretty simple, but it's times like that where you have the most fun. You get to interact with so many people and see so many different things. For instance, I have a Mach 1 Swap 98 V6. The Mach 1 Motors only came in a 2003 and 2004 Mustang New Edge, and I decided to swap it over. When I went down to Florida for Mustangs at Daytona, I seen so many different things that I never thought would be possible is just crazy, it's just ridiculous. Which leads me to point number two. very diverse again you never know what you're gonna see at a car show there is a r33 10 minutes away from my house that's for sale for seventy five thousand dollars here's the ad right here yeah i asked my wife she said that it's not a good investment for my youtube channel so sorry i can't get it that also leads me to point number three you get to see and experience so many different cars, so many different people, and they share the same common interest as you do. Go out to a car meet, meet some people, and hang out. You never know who you're gonna find. One of my closest friends live in Florida. I would have never known what type of person he was until I went to Mustangs at Daytona. Now let's talk about the cons. There is so much judgment in a car community is a little ridiculous. Now I get not a lot of people love slam cars, California squat trucks, low riders, hydraulics, big lifted trucks, or just a weird vehicle in general. But you gotta respect them. That's their build. They love that car. As long as they love that car and they not messing with you, why mess with them? There are so many people that have told me that I just messed up my car because I put a Mach 1 mode in it. Yeah. I'm talking about you. You know who I'm talking about. And I know they're watching too because they're haters. Shots fired and down. Whenever you build your car, just do you. Love your car. Nobody else is going to love it. Nobody else is going to put that amount of money into it. Do not let anybody kill your spirit about that car. Another con is it's seasonal. Really? Car meets don't start until around the end of spring over here in my area. In the spring, all summer, and maybe a little bit of the fall, beginning fall. I wish it was year round, unfortunately it's not, and that's why I feel like that's a con. If it was all year round, I feel like we would be a lot happier. Most car shows have awards. Now every once in a while you get those people that feel like they should have won, they had the cleanest car, they had the best looking Honda, and it's okay to feel like that, but don't be a sore loser about it. And on the flip side, don't be a sore winner. Not saying that you can't celebrate, but come on, you know how Mustang owners are. Don't be that guy. And now we're gonna talk about the car culture I'm just now getting into, and that's the off-road culture. off-road culture is pretty much what it is it's off-roading you take your jeep your 4x4 truck or your toyota fj and you just go off-roading i feel like the best thing about this is just exploring if you decide to go off-roading you'll see stuff that most people won't see you might see a big pond in the middle of the woods that you didn't even know was there maybe a new hangout spot for you and your buddies 
again, just like the other car cultures, it is very diverse as well. There is literally no limit to what you can do off-roading. Well, there is if you have a certain type of vehicle, but it's just that's that's on a different level. Know your vehicle before you decide to go off-roading. If you never off-road before, go with a buddy just to make sure they can pull you out. also very therapeutic let's say you driving along trying to make sure you don't get stuck in the mud and you find a creek with flowing water you shut your truck off you get out your car open up the tailgate lay back and just look at the sky watching the birds listen to the water flowing through the creek if you ever need a getaway that is probably the best getaway you can have just you with nature i know that's kind of sound a little hippie but it really do help whenever you take a break from life like that. I really wish I could end on that note, but I had to talk about the cons. Going off-roading can get you in a lot of trouble. I know it's very unlikely now, but you can still get lost if you go into, let's say a 300 acre field, you can still get lost in it. If you don't have any reception or anything like that, you might need to know your way around that land before you actually take a trip out there. Some people would actually go through a no trespassing area. Let's say you get stuck and there's nobody there to help you. You could be out there for hours just sitting there. That's why I recommend going with a buddy. You also gotta watch out with a lot of peer pressure. Now, peer pressure doesn't happen a lot when you're off-roading, but it can happen. Your buddy has a Jeep and you have a Ford Ranger. Now, I'm not saying which one is better or who's which one should you get, but a Jeep is known for off-roading. So if they go past this mud puddle that literally comes up to their hood and they say, oh, you can do it, but you're in this Ranger that's four by four because it's a work truck. If you go through that mud puddle and lock up your engine because it hydro locked, what now? So you just gotta be careful with peer pressure. If you don't think you can do it, don't try it. There's gonna be people out there that say that their truck is the off-road master. Six inch lift on it, big tires, big wheels on it, and they do not ever take it off-roading. We consider those show trucks, nine times out of 10, they don't take that truck off-roading. Don't believe them. Don't be one of those guys. Now I know I only scratched the surface of the different car cultures. This is probably the main three. Fast culture, the clean culture, and the off-roading culture. If you are interested about cars, I would definitely pick one of those. And of course, there's a lot more pros than cons to it. I just had to even it out for you guys. Comment down below what car culture you are currently visiting the idea of being in. For instance, mine is off-roading. Go ahead and check out this video right here where we take the FJ off-roading. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video, okay?